Let us pray. O oh God of saints and souls who pave the way for our being in this place today, we pray to you that you will help us to give up complacency, truly love one another, and hunger and thirst after righteousness. May your bread of heaven and cup of salvation feed our souls with peace and unspeakable joy. In the name of God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. You hey Shalama Rabamin Shamaya Viahim Tovin Ale Nu Va'al call Yisrael. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life for us and for all Israel. Throughout this past week, these words were heard in Jewish congregations across the nation. They are words from the Kaddish, prayers for those mourning the dead in Judaism. Congregations mourn the death of 11 people gunned down in a synagogue Saturday the 27th of October while worshiping and honoring God's most precious gifts in a baby naming ceremony. No children were killed at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but 11 women and men lost their lives. They ended simply because they were Jewish. By a gunman with a semi-automatic weapon shouting, all Jews must die. It is a weapon that I have referred to as a killing machine in a land that has made such guns idols. This news struck me hard and with some irony. I heard about the synagogue massacre last Saturday, shortly after it happened, while viewing another ugly period of our nation's history, segregation, and the bombing of the Jewish temple here in Atlanta 60 years ago last month, with a group of white and black friends at the Museum of Civil and Human Rights here in Atlanta, downtown. I think I had some competition going on. <laughs> it's all right. As we gave thanks for the sacrifice of those courageous souls and saints for liberating us from that evil, we were quickly reminded that our work against the sin of hatred is still with us. This week, Christian faith leaders and other faith leaders have stood with our Jewish sisters and brothers with a message that is unequivocal. We stand against the hatred of anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish thought and action. So I stand today with clergy across the country to call for peace in our land. Bombs being sent to elected officials and former presidents. Racial shooting in Kentucky. And we sit here this morning coming and asking why? And what must we do? For if we ignore the hate all around us in all its forms, then we fail to honor the very faith that we proclaim, to bear one another's burdens, to be our sisters and brothers' keepers, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to honor the baptismal covenant 
that we will affirm, reaffirm in a few minutes, to respect the dignity of every human being and to seek justice and peace, not just for those with the same color of our skin or our nationality or religion, but for all. On this day that we celebrate all the saints that have marched on in, we come to our own house of worship seeking comfort from the God that we serve. That we have a place to turn to where we can cry, question, be angry, and pray for strength from a God who has promised never to leave us alone in our sadness and our sorrow. Although I am happy on this day that we baptize God's most precious gifts, Hannah Robin, Red Alexander, and for the, all the blessings around us, I am sad that there is such discord that is destroying us. Perhaps you have on your minds why so much pain and suffering in our world, or where is God? That we're not even protected when we go into the house of worship. Where is God when bad things happen to good people is that perennial question. It is a question raised by most, and one that theologians and clergy have grappled with throughout time. In tackling the question of where and why, Jewish Rabbi Harold Kushner writes in his groundbreaking word when bad things happen to good people, that the common why is not the question to ask, for it is unanswerable. After losing a young son to a disease, he writes and recommends that we respond with, given that this has happened, what can I, what can we learn from this? And how can we use it for good? In it, he agrees with Rabbi Myers of Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh that God does not impose such tragedy in our lives. Myers embraces a theology that is grounded in our faith as well as that of our Jewish neighbors, that God gives us free will. In the very first book of our sacred text, in the book of Genesis, our faith begins with the belief that God has given us the gift of free will. We have the freedom to do good or to harm others. And while our good God desires for us to love and to love and to love, there are those who choose the evil of bigotry that destroys God's gift of life that we've all been given and must be respected. This does not mean a God that is indifferent to our pain and suffering. I believe that God cares for us in our pain, weeps and struggles with us, and moves in us with never failing strength so that we can stand against the evil that would destroy us and right the wrongs if we would only turn to God to pray and to act. Nonetheless, it is in our very human nature that we have anxiety, worry, and question and believe that if God is present, things will be Okay. In John's gospel this morning, we hear our human nature presented in Martha, the sister of Mary and Lazarus. Martha and Mary knew a Jewish friend who had been sent from God. And knowing this man of Galilee, Martha is miffed with Jesus because he did not come right away when she told him that her brother Lazarus was dying. And when he arrives a couple days later, she rips into Jesus, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. 
Jesus walks into a community deep in grief. The sisters are weeping. The people in the community are weeping. And the scripture reads that Jesus was troubled, disturbed by what he saw. And it is here that we receive that familiar verse that highlights the compassionate soul of God with us. Jesus wept. He is moved to ease the sadness and suffering of his friends, and in a dramatic move, he says, take away the stone. Praise to God, thanking him for this moment that will call forth believers and raises Lazarus from this tomb. And like so much of our scripture, this powerful gospel is quite timely this morning. It is symbolic of what is on our hearts today, Like Martha and Mary and the Jews surrounding them, our hearts are often heavy with sadness. Amid our sadness, there is hope found at the very heart of this gospel. When we surround ourselves with new life, there is hope. When we name our babies, it is a recognition that new life is always upon us and we will not be moved. May we find comfort today in knowing that new life is here with us. As I look at Hannah Robin, or as I looked at her, and Rhett Alexander, I wonder what are the community and world that we are working to give them, to leave them. Have we accepted death? Or are we anticipating something new and greater being worked out in our midst? In a few minutes, on behalf of these two precious babies, godparents will commit themselves to renouncing all the powers of the world that would allow evil to destroy them as well as women and men. Then we will follow and make a commitment that we will do everything in our power with God's help to support them in their life in Christ. Like Mary and Martha and their community along with Jesus, they wept for Lazarus. But they did not end with weeping. They turned to their Lord Jesus and he dried their tears in our own weeping, that our land is not alive with love and civility for each other and tears that our communities, our grocery stores and malls and even in our houses of worship like safety, we have not folded with despair because the psalmist says that weeping is but for a night and joy comes in the morning. There is great cloud of witnesses Saints who travel this road, exemplars for us to make it through. We are no different than the souls and saints who came before us, those who worked for a day that they did not see. They gathered at the river to be baptized into new life, to be washed in the power of love that can transform the evil all around us. So we can find comfort and joy in knowing that we are not alone in our struggle. St. Luke reminds us that The person who is the stranger is our neighbor. St. Teresa shows us that we can find God in the face of a hungry child. And St. Paul assures us that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we can stand at the tomb with Jesus knowing that resurrection will come. It is because of new life represented in this Paschal candle today. We do not have to be bound with the strips of fear and cloths that silence us in the face of wrongdoing. Jesus says to each of us today that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. As you leave this place to go into that world, Know that God is still speaking for us to do what we can to usher in a world of justice and peace. God is waiting to take off the cloths and to unbind you so that from death 
new life will emerge.